Welcome fellow Stardust. Thank you for joining me for another episode of True Crime and Nails. In today's episode, I'll be telling you the true story that inspired the film Orphan, while doing this set of nails inspired by Candyman. As always, viewer discretion is advised. The film Orphan is about a 33-year-old woman named Lena Klammer from Estonia who poses as a 9-year-old child from Russia named Esther. She has a rare hormone disorder called hypopituitarism, which causes proportional dwarfism, as well as causes her to look much younger than she is. She escaped a psychiatric hospital and fled to Russia where she was able to convince authorities that she was a child and was put into an orphanage. She was adopted by many families before forging identification documents and making it to the US where she was adopted by Kate and John, played by Vera Farmiga and Peter Sarsgaard. While in their home, Esther wastes no time in showing her sinister ways. Throughout the film, we witness her attempt to kill her adoptive siblings, breaks the leg of her school bully, and kills sister Abigail by bludgeoning her with a hammer. She is also successful at isolating Kate and manipulating John. When Kate finds out the truth about Esther's age, she also learns that she killed all of the previous families she was adopted by. Every time, she would try to seduce the husband and when rejected, would kill the entire family and burn their house down. This time was different. When John rejects her advances, she becomes angry and stabs him repeatedly in the chest until he's lifeless. After Kate and Esther scuffle on the frozen lake, Kate manages to break her neck, sending her limp body to the bottom of the lake. The true story behind this terrifying tale is even more disturbing. Babora Skolova, when arrested in 2008, was a 33-year-old woman posing as a 13-year-old child who had been adopted by Clara Marova. Like Esther, she was diagnosed with hypopituitarism. As a master manipulator, she was able to convince Clara, who was around 30 years old, and her older sister, who was about 34, to torture and beat her own two children. What would make a woman, who loved her kids, suddenly want to harm them? How could someone she thought was 13 convince her to do the things that she was charged with? Škrová je tak šestou aktérkou pořímské kauzy, která půjde za mříže. Těm předchozím odvolací soud potvrdil trest už v březnu. Let's go back to Clara's childhood, when she showed early signs of mental illness. She was diagnosed with schizophrenia as a child and believed she was the reincarnation of Joan of Arc and spoke with God. When she got pregnant at 18 with her high school boyfriend, they decided to get married. About a year later, they had their second child. It wasn't long before her husband decided to leave because of her bursts of violence and erratic behavior. For a while after the separation, Clara seemed to adjust well to being a single mother. Her kids had what most kids wanted, which included envy-worthy birthday parties. Soon, she started to feel lonely and asked her older sister, Katerina, who was also said to have schizophrenia, to move in to help her with the kids. This is also likely because she was going to school to study pedagogy and needed the extra hands. Pedagogy is the study of the science of teaching. It's not really clear why Bobora was at the university, but this is where she meets Clara. Babora fed Clara lies and told her that she had escaped a juvenile center where she was physically and sexually abused. She also told her that her name was Annika and went by Anna and that she had leukemia, kidney failure, and was losing her sight and hearing. After building a relationship with quote-unquote Anna and feeling sorry for her, Clara invites her to live with her, her sister, and two kids. Because of Babora's quote-unquote ailments, she went to the hospital regularly. Katerina offered to take her each time and to deal with speaking to the doctor so that Clara could focus on her studies. Occasionally, Clara would text with Babora's doctor who would give her instructions on how to properly care for the quote-unquote sick child. She once met this so-called doctor, but it was dark and he showed her falsified credentials that seemed legit to her. After feeling comfortable and completely integrated in this family, Babora turns up her manipulation up a notch and begins to turn Clara against her own children. 
Babora faked an abduction from the hospital to go on vacation in the mountains. And it seems as though Katerina was in on the lie. After this scare, Clara decided to push hard to legally adopt Babora. However, her doctor told Clara that she couldn't because Andre and Yakub were being mean to Babora. Eager to solve this issue fast, Clara does exactly what the doctor tells her to do, which included physically harming the kids. Also, Babora begins to break things around the house and commits other bad deeds and blames it on the kids. She convinces Clara to punish them also with physical abuse that progressively became more cruel. It still doesn't make sense that a grown woman would just listen to a 13 year old who was telling her to physically harm her kids. But after finally making the adoption legal, it's about this time that Babora lets Clara know that she is part of a religious cult, an offshoot of the Grail movement. As we already know, Clara believes that she had spoken to God and had a divine purpose. Babora then comes along in her life and basically validates all of Clara's delusions. Clara believed that it was divine intervention meeting Babora and that she was finally on a path to salvation. When putting together three people like these women, it's a recipe for disaster. Babora, while I don't think is formally diagnosed with a mental illness, is clearly a sociopath who preyed on the vulnerable, weak minds of two schizophrenics. After the adoption was finalized, which was achieved with the aid of fellow cult members and a child stand-in at court, Babora claimed that Yakub and Andre were still being mean to her. To fix this, Clara was to take the children to a secluded cabin where they would be treated with shock therapy, beaten, forced to cut themselves with knives and fight each other. At this cabin were three other adults who participated in this disgusting act. Jan Skrla, Babora's brother, Jan Turek, and Hannah Basova, a friend of Katarina and Clara. The abuse continued when the kids returned to their home. They were put in dog crates naked in a basement-like room. Without any pillows or blankets, they were left to sit in their own waste and would be forced to eat their own vomit. One of the kids thought he was going to die when Babora dunked his head in a bucket of water. Babora then came up with the idea to fatten the kids up in order to eat them. And that's just what they did. The women began to force feed the kids and soon enough sliced the flesh of Andre and ate it in front of him. At one point, he was forced to eat his own flesh. Another bright idea Babora had was to get a baby monitor so they could watch the kids from the comfort of their kitchen. This is what ultimately saves the kids. A next door neighbor bought the same brand baby monitor for his newborn baby. Apparently, sometimes baby monitors can pick up signals from other homes. The neighbor saw images of the abused children, naked and looking malnourished. On May 10, 2007, when the police arrived, the women refused to let them in the room the kids were locked up in. When they finally broke the door down, they found the two young children locked in dog cages. They also believe they found a 13-year-old girl who was crying hysterically in a corner, clutching her teddy. The police put the kids in a children's home while Clara and Katarina were in custody. Eventually, the sisters confessed to the abuse of Jakob and Andre, but the police were confused as to why they didn't mention Annika, i.e. Babora who Clara said was her 13-year-old adoptive daughter. When police went to the children's home, they learned that she had disappeared. After this is when Clara turned on Babora and said that she had been brainwashed by her and the doctor who had been telling her how to care for Babora and how to punish her kids. The doctor that Clara met that one late evening turned out to be Babora's father, who was the leader of this offshoot cult of the Grail movement called the Ants. And the text messages she received from him trace back to phone numbers belonging to Barbora and Katarina. So was Katarina in on it the entire time? Sources don't make this clear. The Grail movement was formed after World War II in the late 40s in Germany by a self-proclaimed messiah, Oskar Ernst Bernhardt, also known by his pen name, Abruschen. In 1928, he wrote the teachings in the light of truth, the Grail message. The group known as the Grail movement today was organized by its followers, not Oscar himself. He said, quote, although I joyfully hail the association, I nevertheless cannot lead them, nor can I take part in them. 
For in the end, such endeavors always result in ties for the person around whom they are grouped. I must be and remain free in what I have to say. Groups of readers of Oscar's teachings wanted to live close to him, so gradually the Grail settlement was formed in Vomperburg. In this settlement, a hall that sat 300 people was built where Oscar would lead worship on Sundays and three annual Grail events. In 1938, he was arrested by the Nazis who had just annexed Austria and kicked out the rest of the followers off the land so that it could be used as a Nazi training camp. After Oscar was released from prison, he was put under house arrest until he died in 1941. In 1945, when the war ended, his followers returned to the settlement to rebuild under the direction of Oscar's wife, Maria Bernhardt. By this time, the Grail movement was a term used to describe these followers. There is said to be 10,000 members all over the world in countries like Canada, Switzerland, Germany, Nigeria, and the US. The spokesperson for the Grail movement in the Czech Republic, Artur Zablukal, had this to say about the offshoot who call themselves the Ants. Quote, we broke with the people involved in this 11 years ago, after they added to the Grail message with their own imaginings and fantasies. I sent them a letter telling them they were no longer part of the Grail movement. End quote. Apparently, the Ants required its members to prove their devotion through physical acts of violence. There is also speculation that they were involved in pedophilia and child sex trafficking. Babora's father seems to have had connections because he was never arrested and nothing is said about him in sources about the case. In court, Clara broke down crying and exclaimed how sorry she was for what she put her own children through. She said, quote, terrible things have happened. I realize it and can't understand how I could have allowed it, end quote. Sadly, it was likely her schizophrenia and religious delusions that let her fall victim to brainwashing. Had she not come in contact with Pabora, it's possible she may have never physically harmed her children, but there's really no way to know. She also went on to explain how Pabora had two personalities. One minute she would act her age, and the next she would act like a child, playing with toys and sucking her thumb. Bobora was finally found eight months later in Norway, again posing as a 13-year-old who had just been adopted, except this time she was posing as Adam, a boy who supposedly had gone missing once prior. At this point, she had been attending middle school for about three months, and the staff was criticized for not figuring it out sooner. A teacher explained that they thought something was off about Adam, but couldn't be sure because at that age, kids can be weird. At first, it was thought that the father of Adam was in on the scam since the real Adam was said to be well and living with his mother. But the father thought he was helping Babora out in a state of emergency after she told him that she had been abused by her own father. It was later found out that Babora had been adopted by many other families, and it was believed that she was being groomed by her father to be idolized in their cold. Clara, Katarina, and the three adults that took part in the abuse of the children at the cabin all received sentences of less than 10 years and are all currently free with new names and identities. Babora only received five years but was released after only two and a half. She also has changed her name and has never been heard from again, which makes us wonder, has she been adopted by yet another family? Has she brainwashed them to become part of this cult? Lara's kids were saved by their neighbor who saw them on his baby monitor. But how many other kids were out there still being abused by the ants? Are there kids currently being abused in order to be broken and assimilated into this cult? The answer is likely yes. Tou Aničku a později na chlapce Adama. Škrová je tak šestou aktérkou kuřínské kauzy, která půjde za mříže. Těm předchozím odvolací soud potvrdil trest už v březnu. Thank you again for joining me today, fellow Stardust. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.